Well, the Valley of Flowers is back, and here we're with the chairperson for the Valley of Flowers, Lori Lowry. We've got a heck of an event coming up here in just a couple of weeks. Yes, it's, it's around the corner. It's coming pretty quick here. May 5th, 6th, and 7th is going to be here before we know it. And this year they're they're terming it the world the wonders of the world. Yes. Now what tell me about the title. Let's let's start with that. So we we're trying to think of something a little global, a little bit different this year and wonders of the world. We're not just cluing it into just the seven wonders of the world. Anything that is wondrous to anyone could be somewhere they've gone, something they've okay. done, someone they admire, anything along those lines. So we're going to try and highlight some of that this year. Awesome. And well, hopefully some of the floats will, will take that into effect, too? Yes, we're hoping so. Yeah. Do yes. we do we know, have any heads up on uh, some of the designs this year? We haven't gotten anything in very specific this year so far. Um, a lot of applications, so that's a good thing. But we do have a lot of people talking about different things that they could, you know, put a pyramid up and yeah. how are they going to have the Egyptians walking by and, you know, different things along those lines. So. Well, Lori, tell us uh, a little bit, some, some of the highlights that we're going to see at the festival this year. <clears throat> so some of the highlights we've got this year, um, of course, is the festival itself at the grounds down at the Knights of Columbus. Mm -hmm. um, this year they're going to have their rides and barbecue and food and all of their vendors and that that'll be there. There. Is that going to start on Friday night It'll again? It'll start on Friday night again and um, 18 and under um, must have an adult so keeping it family friendly okay. which is a very good thing here in Florissant. We're all about family. And uh, from 4 to 10 on uh, Friday night I believe Saturday is from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday is from uh, sorry uh, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. So uh, a lot of things to do there at the festival grounds. You've got the shrine that's on the grounds. I believe they're going to have a few activities in that that are going to be going on there at the shrine as well. We've got uh, the Egan Center on Friday and Saturday. We've got our gardeners, the plant sale that'll be there. That starts on Friday, I believe, noon. And that's always in the arena. Always going to be in the arena where the ice rink is. Yeah. Uh, I do know this. You want to get there fast. If yeah. you've got some things you've got some <laughs> eyes on. Um, last year, I know the line started uh, pretty well around 10. And uh, the plant sale swiftly started about noon. Um, yeah, we last notice as, as, we go th as we go through there every year, the majority of the folks really are right there oh, at the yes. plant sale. That, that, yes. that really draws all the attention. Oh, yes. I tr try and sneak in and wheedle through and get some of their plants and that that they really like. So, uh, so yes, it's, it's a great event there. We really appreciate them being there. And then they also have it again on Saturday. So they'll be there from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday as well. We've got our crafters and uh, vendors that will be there on the ice rink. Okay. And that is Friday and Saturday as well. Noon on Friday to 9 o'clock and then Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So we'll have the different vendors from the area, different crafters and that that'll be there. Um, there's also the flea market that'll be inside um, in the lower level at the Egan Center that is uh, part of uh, Old Town Partners. They have uh, our flea market that comes in. I think last year we had uh, baklava there, different, yeah. uh, different foods and that as well. Um, the food tents as well will be back this year. Um, we've got a lot of different cultural foods that are going to be Good. there. Friday and Saturday. Um, Friday night, again, I believe our food court starts at noon to 9, and Saturday it is from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I believe the Hispanic Festival is coming back as well. Okay. And uh, Saturday night, I believe they always have some kind of entertainment in that there that's at the Egan Center. Now, surrounding the fair, you know, not the fairgrounds, but the James J. Egan Center where the food court is, there's always ample activities for the kids. I mean, they've had the yes. bubble bus in the past. Yes. What are, what are some of those things that they're going to have going on? Well, I've got the circus. The so circus is coming back. The Zopi. Circus is coming back. Excellent. Yes, Zopi. Um, I believe we've got... Um, RW uh, is coming back. We've got, I think last year they had the dog handler with the dog tricks and things like that. Yeah. Um, we're also going to have uh, the ho House of Bounce. Uh -huh. So the kids always love that. Absolutely. Uh, pony rides. Mm -hmm. We've also got Suzy Zoo coming back. Kay. So we have a lot of activities. And this year, um, we've got a little bit more community involvement with the police and the fire departments. Okay. Um, we're hoping to have a canine demonstration. And the beloved Eddie the dog, the canine, will be there as well for most of the day uh, for activities with the kids. And the fire department's coming, and they're going to have some activities in that with the kids as well. So, and those spread that, it out. And those that look forward to the Valley of Flowers for the car show, where's the car show going to be located? The car show is from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. on St. Francis Street. And uh, you can register through the uh, Valley of Flowers website or Old Town Partners website. So I think last year they had over almost 200 cars. It uh, ended up being a really nice event. Great. Yes. And other things that will be at uh, the Egan Center, the uh, Pretty Baby Photo Contest. That's always a nice thing. Uh, people can send in their pictures, make sure they've got their you know, child's name, their address, and 
things along those lines for identifiers. It's five dollars a picture and we hang up the pictures at the booth where the Valley Flowers girls and that are and people come by and vote on popularity and uh, also vote on um, personality of the of the children and there's a nice little prize awarded at the end of the day. I'm sorry, at the end of the prize. Well, what's the prize? Well, Do we know yet? Last year, it was two huge baskets full of things. <laughs> I, there were so many things in there, I couldn't even count. Cool. So uh, we Great. have uh, one of our, uh, our board members does a really good job putting that together. We've got the Volks March. That's coming back as well. So that is a free event, and you register behind the, uh, the uh, Old Town Partners Valley Flowers House off of uh, St. Charles Street at 601. And it's from 9 to 11. Um, it's free again. You just come, show up. You just sign your name up and they take you on a little bit of a tour through Old Historic Florissant and kind of show you a few things around town um, even with regards to the festival that's going on. Um, this year, go ahead. No, I say, and I also see there's, there's going to be a, a mammography service. Yes, yes. Awesome. Uh, we uh, partner with uh, Missouri Baptist and uh, they're going to be uh, having a mammography van that will be there at the James A. Egan Center. And it starts at 9 to noon, um, depending upon how many people can get a hold of them for appointments, they might extend that time out a little bit. Well, they need to set up that appointment beforehand? Yes, if um, they need to call and schedule, and the phone number for that is 314-996-5170. And if you do not have insurance, then they can contact you with uh, Teresa, and her number is 314-956-9829. So uh, last year um, we had scheduled them and they had some uh, misfortunes with the van itself. So uh, they're going to come back again this year and, and hopefully it'll be something new to just to tack on to the event. And w what is the anniversary of, of the festival? How many years has Florissant put this on now? This is the 55th year. 55th? Yes. Amazing. Yes, yeah, started in 1963. So, and it's one of the uh, first festivals of spring, as well as one of the uh, largest uh, events in the metropolitan area. And how many years have you been working directly with the festival? This is my second year. Is it? Yes. Yes. They didn't scare you off last year. You're back. Not Everything, yet. Everything's still going okay. <laughs> so far. You have your hair. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so well, far, good. so far, so good, yes. Well, I think we're looking forward to a, a fabulous festival, yes. um, as always, in the city of Florence. And it's going yeah. to gonna bring out uh, the best of the families. And it's a great time that we really get to see how, how the community shines. Yeah, and it's really evident. I mean, we have our parade that's, again, it's on the 7th of May. It's wonderful. It starts at 145. Um, praying for good weather. We might ask the Pink Sisters for a little help in that matter. Um, I'm trying to think uh, which council member is actually in charge of the weather. Which one's the newest one that, that's responsible if we have bad weather on that parade I'm going to give it to all of them. <laughs> I like it. I like and it. And then we'll make sure the mayor is overseeing that. You know, <laughs> make sure it's all taken care of. Um, and uh, this year we've got a, a parade marshal is uh, Dr. Randy Jones. He's a veterinarian and he works at Cross Keys. Okay. And he is our parade marshal this year and he has dedicated most of his time to the canines, the working dogs in the metropolitan area. So volunteers and uh, takes care of the canines for free. So a great service that he provides. So we thought we'd honor him. He's a long time uh, member of Florissant. He's lived in the city so we thought a perfect person perfect. to go ahead and lead the parade this year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then after the parade, everybody ends up, of course, at the Knights Grounds. Yeah. Because the crown is at 4 o'clock. You can't miss that. Right. We've got 17 girls this year. So, uh, very dynamic. Amazing. We've got six schools that are involved. So, it's, it's great to have the participation from the girls in the community. And Looking the business has always rallied behind. Oh, it. yes. There's lots oh, of support. Gosh. Yes. So, the, flo the floats are. come through absolutely beautiful. Yes. And, and the girls are dressed to the nines. Oh yes, oh they're looking forward to it already, yeah. you know. How, well, how big's the ball gown? How, <laughs> how, how dressy can I be? And we told them, be a princess, it's That's your day. Absolutely. Be yep. a princess that day, splurge, you know, make it make it really a, a good day for you because it's all about them. Well, we definitely look forward to, uh, to the parade. Yes, yes. Now tell us also about how many people are really involved in putting this parade and festival together. Um, currently we have uh, myself and nine other members of the board and they're from all over the community. We've got a uh, liaison from the Knights of Columbus. Um, we've got uh, other people that work within the community. We've got some retired uh, community members as well, and uh, we work all year long to get this put together. It's a not-for-profit, so there is a little bit of explaining to go along with that. A lot of people think the city's paying for everything, right. so uh, we pretty much uh, foot the bill for the whole weekend. Okay. So uh, without our sponsors and the ones that volunteer, we've got uh, uh, Kent Miller in the community who helps us out with our photography. Um, we have some other ladies that help out with the girls' sashes and, and putting different things together. So it's a big community event. 
Okay, Lori, let's recap this. What are the main things going on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for this for this year? So Friday, um, Friday uh, at the Knights Grounds is all your activities, your games, everything uh, that's going on there, your rides, um, and, food, and barbecue. And that starts at? Knights Grounds starts at 4 o'clock on Friday. Okay. And um, the Egan Center as well um, starts at noon on uh, Friday. So um, all the events up at the Egan Center, uh, the crafters, the vendors, um, the food tents and things like that. Uh, the circus will be going on all day um, Friday, and I believe they have an evening show there. Saturday, um, you can take your pick. You can either go to the Knights Grounds and attend everything there. Um, <clears throat> that start again probably around that 10 in the morning? That starts again, I believe, yes, at, uh, at 11 a.m., I'm sorry, on uh, Saturday. And then the, uh, the food court and everything on Saturday is from at 9 o'clock. Okay. So, and that'll be going on until 6 o'clock. So you can take your pick. The Saturday is uh, at the Egan Center. You've got the gardeners, um, the kids' world that's going on, uh, the different events that are be put on with the police and the circus as well. They'll have shows all day long. Great food and that to come mm -hmm. to. Um, pretty baby contest. You get to see some of the, uh, the Queen and Court. They'll be working there that day. And Sunday is the parade. Everything culminates with the parade. So uh, we'll have everybody there at 145 to kick off the parade from the Egan Center. And anybody that's been to those parades in the past, you know, you have to get there a lot earlier than 145 yes. to make sure you get your slot on the street. Yes. Last year, I think, actually, I saw mm, probably about six blocks with chairs on them the night before. Uh huh. So people are already getting their tents out, getting their chairs out and things like that. So uh, hopefully we'll have some vendors in that that are uh, going to be going up and down the street during the parade with some water and different things yeah. like that. We so. usually see the Boy Scouts there. Always yes. pulling the cooler with some yes. waters and some sodas, and yes. and I think I think I've even seen the Gus's pretzels come yes. through. Yes, so. somebody always somebody yeah. always makes that. Yep. Yeah, we've always got to see them in there, so they're coming up and down with that. So uh, and it culminates at four o'clock with the crowning on Sunday. Best things. Get tops a brand new tops off all the stress, all everything the stress. that you're doing. Yes, it makes this it all whole worth weekend it. It's all makes worth it. Worth it. it. Yes, we get to welcome them into the family because we tell the girls every year you, you might move on and go to college and do other things, but that's when we welcome you into the family. So you know the 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 candidate that gets crown queen. What what does she get to do then for the for the the remaining year? Does she come back? Does she does she stay in support with other other things going on in Florida and after the after the crowning? It kicks off. I think the first parade is in uh, July. They get to be in the Fourth of July parade in Ferguson and get to experience the uh, parade downtown St. Louis for Thanksgiving and uh, the Northern Lights Parade in Ferguson. It's wonderful because it's nighttime, so everything's really decorated really nicely. And we just finished our, our last parade with the girls this year was uh, St. Patrick's Day, so that's kind of our sad time because okay. we know it's kind of kind of over with them and. Yeah. Everybody gets a little emotional, but it, it's <laughs> nice because, like I said, they're all just part of the family. Everybody really takes care of the girls and makes sure they have a really good time. So it's That's a wonderful, wonderful. experience. Uh, I can't say enough about the girls that come out to want to be candidates because it helps them grow, I think. It's a great thing to put on the resume, and it's just so interesting to see them go from really shy girls and, yeah. you know, they're girls that don't know each other. They, from different schools in different areas and you know the first event they're just kind of by themselves a little and you know talk a little bit but by the end of the year they're up front and center just talking about fluorescent they're great representatives of the community so it's it's really wonderful to see them evolve see the nice come together yes yes it's all due to this whole weekend that's great so. well Lori, thanks for all the hard work and effort and stress and hair pulling that you put into uh, to making this a wonderful weekend don't forget the dates may 5th 6th and 7th the Valley of Flowers, we'll see you there.